Hello, this is Monica Reinagel, and this is episode number 469 of the Nutrition Diva podcast. Thanks for listening today. Veggie burgers have been around for decades, and as the popularity of plant-based and flexitarian diets has grown, there are more and better options in this category than ever. You probably wouldn't ever have mistaken one of these for actual beef, but if you're just looking for something meatless to put on a hamburger bun, well, you've always had plenty of choices. But there's a new meatless burger on the market that claims to look, cook, taste, and chew so much like actual ground beef that you might not be able to tell the difference. And having sampled it this week, I have to say that this claim is actually not far off the mark. It's called the Impossible Burger, and it's made from wheat, soy, and potato protein, and coconut oil. The makers have done an admirable job configuring these ingredients into something that looks and acts remarkably like raw ground beef. You can even choose whether you want to cook it well done or still pink in the center. But the magic ingredient that is responsible for its beefy taste and appearance is heme, an iron-containing molecule that's abundant in animal tissue. While all animal foods contain heme iron, red meat is much higher in heme iron than chicken or fish, and that's what provides much of the color and flavor that we associate with red meat. Because it's so well absorbed, heme iron is terrific at treating and preventing iron deficiency and anemia. Plants tend to contain the much less absorbable non-heme form of iron, but the clever folks at Impossible Foods have figured out how to get yeast to produce a plant-based source of heme iron that's identical to the heme in red meat. Heme iron may be a double-edged sword, however. Although it is very bioavailable, it's also a highly reactive molecule, which in excessive amounts could lead to cell damage. Studies have found that those who eat the most red meat have higher risks of colon cancer and other diseases compared to people who eat other types of meat or no meat at all. And one of the working theories points to high intakes of heme iron as the culprit. So ironically, if you're avoiding red meat because of its association with increased cancer risk, it's possible that this meatless burger may present similar concerns. Keep in mind, however, that these worrisome associations between red meat and cancer are seen in those who are eating red meat once or twice a day. Those who eat red meat just once a week have approximately the same risk as those who never eat meat. How does the Impossible Burger stack up nutritionally compared with meat burgers? I'm going to break that down for you, but first, a word from our sponsor, Beachbody On Demand. Beachbody On Demand is an online fitness streaming service that gives you unlimited access to a wide variety of highly effective, world-class workouts personalized to meet your needs. It's the total package to help you become the total package this year. You know, my exercise routine always suffers a bit in the wintertime when I can't get outside as much to walk and run, and Beachbody is helping me fill that gap with fun classes that I can do at home or even when I'm traveling. Workouts range from just 10 minutes to over an hour, and they're all completely accessible on any web-enabled device, all for less than the cost of a gym membership. Give this a try. Right now, my listeners can get a free trial membership by texting the word DIVA to 303030. And then you get full access to the entire platform for free. All the workouts, all the information for 30 days for free. Just text DIVA to 303030. And now let's take a closer look at how this new meatless option, the Impossible Burger, stacks up against ground beef and turkey. Nutritionally speaking, the Impossible Burger has been formulated to approximate the nutritional profile of 80% lean ground beef, both for better and for worse. It contains a similar amount of protein and calories. It's a bit lower in total fat, but it's actually significantly higher in saturated fat. And that's because unlike beef, which contains a mixture of saturated and unsaturated fats, coconut oil is virtually all saturated fat. So if you're avoiding beef in an effort to moderate your saturated fat intake, 
you might be better off choosing a turkey burger or a bison burger, both of which are quite a bit leaner and lower in saturated fat. If, however, your main motivation for avoiding beef is out of concern for the welfare of the cows, or perhaps the impact of cattle farming on the environment or the climate, but you just love the taste of red meat, well then this might be a great solution for you. Compared with cattle farming, the Impossible Burger uses far less land, water, and produces less greenhouse gas emissions. As you can see, there are a lot of different reasons that people choose to avoid meat or red meat. So I don't think that this is going to be the ideal alternative for everyone. If you're sensitive to soy or wheat, for example, this is not for you. And if you find the taste, texture, and appearance of meat disgusting, well, this is definitely not for you. But it's a pretty impressive feat of culinary engineering. We really do seem to be closer to being able to produce meat without any animals. Whether this ends up being an upgrade for us nutritionally, we're going to have to evaluate on a case-by-case basis. Are you curious? Well, right now, the Impossible Burger is only available in restaurants. It's not available in retail or even direct to consumers. You can check the company's website to see if there's a restaurant in your area. And if you try it, I'd love to hear what you thought. Or if you're not interested in trying it for whatever reason, I'd like to hear why. So you can share your thoughts about that on our website at quickanddirtytips.com or on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. Now, before we go, I have some bonus content this week on phytates in whole grains and their potential role in fighting cancer. But first, spring is coming, and that means spring cleaning is coming too. And a kitchen can be a messy place. Beyond the dropped crumbs and spilled milk, there are a few notorious spots in the kitchen that are especially prone to messes. And some of that has less to do with simple spills and more to do with the property of food itself. And so, sponsored by Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser, here's your spill science tip of the week. We're going to talk about the microwave. We're all familiar with microwave splatter, from bubbling tomato sauce to exploding oatmeal. It's a pain to clean up, and it can ruin your dish. In the past, I've talked about ways that you can adjust your microwave habits to improve your results. One common complaint about microwave use is that it heats food unevenly, and that is also where microwave splatter comes from and why certain foods explode. At a high setting, the water within the food turns to steam, and that vapor needs somewhere to go. If it can't easily escape, it can form a bubble that bursts or explodes. Foods that have rinds, skins, shells, or membranes are especially prone to explosions because their outer layers trap that vapor inside, and then the pressure builds up until that potato becomes a mess of starchy gunk all over your microwave. A simple way to prevent this from happening is to poke holes in your potato before you nuke it. And for foods like oatmeal and tomato sauce, try a lower power setting, which allows more time for the heat to transfer from hot parts of the food to cooler parts. You can also interrupt the cooking halfway through to stir the food to distribute that heat more evenly. But if that mistake has already been made and the oatmeal is now all over the inside of your microwave, reach for a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser because it makes cleaning it up such a breeze. All you have to do is wet the sponge, squeeze it out, and it's ready to erase. The Mr. Clean Magic Eraser cleans up messes and stains even better than wipes and sprays, and it works all over your kitchen. It's great on walls, of course, but it's also a great way to clean up that microwave without resorting to harsh chemicals. So add the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to your spring cleaning toolkit. And for a list of other stains and messes, check out mrclean.com slash nutrition diva. Jenny writes, I read a book on plant-based diets, which claims that the phytates in whole grains kill cancer cells. Do whole grains really fight cancer? Well, this is an ironic question because in some corners of the nutrition world, the phytates in grains and legumes are actually reviled as quote-unquote anti-nutrients, while in other circles they're heralded as cancer killers. And in fact, both are true. Phytic acid in nuts, whole grains, and legumes can bind to minerals like calcium and magnesium, and it can reduce the absorption of these minerals from certain foods. 
This effect can be greatly diminished by soaking, sprouting, or even just cooking these foods. But if you're not soaking or sprouting your grains, don't worry, it's still unlikely to lead to mineral deficiencies. In fact, the health benefits of phytic acid from whole grains and legumes appear to be much more significant than any downside. In addition to building strong bones, lowering cholesterol, and removing heavy metals from your body, phytates may also help prevent cancer, colon cancer in particular. Now, it is worth pointing out that there are a lot of things that can kill cancer cells, but killing cancer cells in a Petri dish and impeding the progression of cancer in a living organism are two entirely different things. Phytates are not effective chemotherapy, but they have been found to reduce the effects of actual chemotherapy in cancer patients. You'll find lots more listener questions and answers on my blog at nutritionovereasy.com, as well as on the Nutrition Diva podcast website at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com. And if you have a question for me, feel free to send me an email or post it on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. I hope you enjoyed this week's bonus content. Thanks for listening and have a great week.